Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a custom build in today. Um, this is coming for a one day wonder repair. So um, a client has just driven in long distance to get this fixed. Um, and they called me up during the week to talk to me about this one. And the problem with this computer is uh, it's one of the front USB ports doesn't work because the, it has a broken pin on the USB 3.0 header. Now, normally if someone said I've snapped off a pin on the, three point, on the USB 3.0 header, I'd be like, so just run with only one USB port at the front. Who cares? You know, like the amount of hassle it is, just don't bother. Um, however, this thing has a ROG Maximus 11 in it. It's an expensive motherboard. This motherboard is like 400, 450 pounds, that kind of money. So that's probably closer to $500 for the US peeps. And so, you know, for a $500 motherboard, it's like, uh, actually, it would be a bit of a shame to leave that broken. So what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to take this thing apart, get the motherboard out, and we're going to do a single pin replacement on that header. Now, I don't think this repair is going to be particularly difficult. I've done a quick test run to remove a pin from a donor motherboard so I could check what I was up against before we got to work on this one. And it wasn't super difficult. The hardest bit is just removing the plastic bit from around the header. Um, so, however, we'll take it apart because then also we can look at what has happened here, look at the strain, and I can also show you what other options you've got to avoid this happening to your computer. So, let's start out by taking this thing apart. Okay, so to see what we're doing in here, we've got to remove the vertical mount graphics card. So it's actually a really nice build, this one. It's got these, uh, these Cooler Master uh, combo fans in. I haven't looked up to see exactly what models they are or what they're called, but these are, uh, these are triple fans, and it's a single block with three fans on it, essentially, which I think is super cool. It just has a single connector for uh, power and a single connector for RGB, which is kind of rad. And the vertical mount graphics card, that's a Cooler Master mount as well. So we'll just ease him out, just enough to get to the power connectors. There we go. That's a 2070 Super that we're just pulling out there. And now we've got the graphics card out, we can start seeing where the problem comes in. Okay, so from this angle, we can see where the, um, the USB 3 header kind of bent up to get over these fans. And this is kind of one of the problems with these um, Lian Li cases, is that uh, once you've got the bottom fans in, they, they really start impeding on the space at the bottom of the motherboard. And if you combine that with the fact that the USB 3.0 header is awful, then we have our issue. So I'm just going to see if I can pop that guy out. Yep. And let's see. So our missing pin is in the top right. You can't see it, but I'll give you guys a good view in a minute. And oh, I lights in the top left, and the remains of it are in the connector. You can just see that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the motherboard out of here, um, and we'll well, we'll see if we can get that guy out the header. That's probably going to be one of the harder jobs, to be honest. And then we can actually get to replacing this pin. Okay, right, we've got the motherboard out. And so now, as you can see here, um, we've got the top right pin is the natively missing pin. There's always a missing pin there for keying anyway. This top left one, that's the guy that's actually snapped off. So there's the, the remains of it at the bottom. So what I need to do now is I need to remove the plastic surround. Um, it, now, it is, it is possible just to replace the entire connector on this. 
uh, that would require desoldering all of the pins at the same time. I haven't tried doing this yet. It might not be too difficult to just hot air that out. Um, however, uh, I'm going for a single pin replacement because that can be done with a soldering iron. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these angled tweezers I've got here um, to uh, remove the plastic surround. And I'm basically just going to very gingerly get underneath there and just pry it out. You need to be careful not to mark the motherboard here. So just go slowly and go carefully. So uh, let's get into it. Easy peasy. That was a lot easier than my practice board was. Okay, so next I'm just going to put just a little bit of fresh solder on the back of the pin that we're removing because that's going to lower the melting point of the solder and make it easier to remove. So let's get this lined up where you can see it and we're just going to put a little bit of solder on that boy just so he flows. That's it. That's all we need to do. And now I'm just going to balance the board upright. And with my left hand, I'm going to hold on to that pin with the tweezers. And with my right hand, I'm just going to reheat that pin. And there we go. That's our broken pin out. Here's my replacement pin that I've removed from my donor motherboard, which I did exactly the same as what you just saw in order to obtain. So now I'm just going to press that against the hole and with a bit of luck, if I just heat up that hole, I should be able to melt the solder in there and just push this in. There we go. And just going to check it's straight. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, because we can do a little bit of bending, but the height needs to be correct. That looks good to me. And I'll just give that a bit of tweaking just to get it straight. That should be good enough for me to get the connector on. These connectors can be a bit of a pig. There we go, like I bought one. That is repaired. So that's the motherboard done. Now we need to get the old pin out of the um, header wire from the case. This is gonna be a little bit trickier, I suspect, but let's take a look at it. So here's our, uh, um, here's our header plug. Um, and you can see it's all a little bit dented and mauled and stuff where it's where from attempts to plug in and again, this is a terrible connector, so it doesn't surprise me in the least to see it look like this. Um, but we've got to get that pin out. And as you can see, that is flush buried in there. So um, like there's no room to get tweezers onto that. Um, like if I get my my angled tweezers, yeah, just there's not a hope in hell of even grabbing hold of that. Um, I could get my super fine tweezers. These guys need to be reground, but like these are the ones I use for really small components. And even if I actually trim and regrind that, those tips, again, they're not going to have the strength to pull on it, even if I can grab hold of it. So that's not going to work either. So what I'm going to start out with is um, I'm going to start out with a Stanley blade or a razor blade here. And I'm just going to see if I can just pry that out. So I'm just going to get on the side of it. Am I just pushing that deeper in? Oh hell, it's loose in there and I literally just pushed it a little bit deeper. What a nightmare. Ha. Huh. Okay. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to happen. It's not magnetic, is it? No, there was an attempt. Ha. Huh. This is going to be tricky. This is a molded connector, so I can't take it apart without ruining it. And if we ruin the connector, then we may as well just buy new front USBs for the case. Just going to see if I can split the connector slightly. Yeah. 
Yes, I can. Yeah, we're onto something with that. Might have to glue the connector back together, but that's no problem. Yeah. Got it. I did. <laughs> All right, so we've recovered the snapped pin out of the connector. As you can see, I was kind of making that up as I went along, so I didn't give any commentary on the way in, but I've just cut the connector on the sides just so I could split it open a bit. And we just, we just broke the housing ever so slightly, which actually gave me access to the back of the pin chamber. And then I was able to take this other pin here and just push it through, get it out from behind. So don't know if anyone else would be so lucky as, as we just got there, but I uh, don't know. Hopefully it'll give you ideas. What I'll do now is I'll just get some super glue and we'll just super glue that shut again, stick a clamp on it, and that'll be right as rain. Right, I've just glued and clamped that, so we'll give that five or ten minutes to cure, and then we should be able to reassemble. Right, I've gone on lunch while that glue dries, and so we've got some little shiny marks there, so it's not super pretty. However, I have a plan for this. So this is now working. Now, we can plug this into the motherboard again, but we still have the same problem of just that strained connection. So what I'm going to do now is I've got here a ribbon extension for the USB 3.0 ports. Uh, I alluded to one of these uh, when I was reviewing the Lancool 2 that I have, but I couldn't find these for love nor money. And literally the morning after I shot that video, I found them. Um, so I've got these. Um, another thing I also have are some 90 degree connectors. How, so those are another option, but these guys, you can find them on Amazon and eBay. They're kind of expensive for what they are, but if you order them from China well in advance, you'll get them a lot cheaper. And as you can see, because that's a little ribbon extension, we can plug that into the motherboard and just immediately do a, a sharp 90 degree bend and then extend that into the back of the case, into the cable tidying, and then plug it in. And that will then mean that, um, A, we don't care if this plug looks a little scruffy because we'll be going up to this extension, and B, it just means that all of that is hidden out of sight and we've got full strain relief now and that will go up into the motherboard. So now all that's left is to rebuild the computer, so let's get to it. Right, we're all fully reassembled now, and as you can see in computer, I've got two flash drives connected. I've got my Toolkit flash drive and my Windows 10 flash drive. They're both plugged into the front, uh, and they are both now visible, so we know we've got two working USB ports. Uh, a couple of things of note. First of all, when I put on the plastic surround for the pins, the, the shroud, the clip, I don't know what you call it, I actually put it on upside down. Um, so if you've been screaming at the screen, yeah, I found that as well. We initially plugged it in and it was saying there's an error with this USB device. And we were like, uh-oh. Uh, however, 
Uh, we spotted it, we put it the right way up, now it's working. We also had one more issue as well uh, with the first extension that we used. Uh, the first extension that I used, uh, this one, only one of the ports was working on it. However, I switched out to the other one that I had in the two pack and that one works just fine. So it's entirely possible, maybe this one wasn't plugged in properly. I'm gonna test it on another computer, but just keep that in mind when you buy, when you buy weird little adapters like this, I would strongly recommend buying two of them just in case you get a bad one. Because if you get a bad one, it's very hard to tell whether it's your adapter or your other things or what. Either way, we're all fully fixed now. So that's it for this video. Uh, as always, my support links will be in the description down below for the Twitter, the Patreon, the Discord, and also my Instagram. Or stick around for the end card, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot and goodbye.